Good morning. Am I live? Welcome to this um, specific gravity demonstration. Um, so I've never done an Instagram live before. Oh, hello. Okay, yeah, thank you for joining Butte 920. <laughs> um, yeah, so today I'm gonna do um, a demonstration of how to measure the specific gravity of your glazes. So as you guys are all just joining us, um, I'll just kind of explain a little bit about um, why we measure specific gravity of our glazes, what it does, why it's important. Um, so feel free to type your comments um, and then I'll answer them. Uh, again, this is my first Instagram Live, so hopefully this goes according to plan. Um, so specific gravity is a way to calculate how much water is in your glaze. And so the amount of water that's in our glaze is going to determine um, how our glaze is applied and the thickness of our application. And so I'll just show you a few textile examples of when you have less water versus more water. So um, as we know, like sometimes when our glaze is too thick, then it can, it can run in the kiln. And so um, when you measure specific gravity, it's just a way of like calculating the amount of water so that you always have a consistent amount of water and so you're not guessing every time that you're glazing, um, so then your application can become more consistent. So let me just grab some textiles here. So for example, sometimes you have a glaze that um, is a different color when it's thin versus when it's thick. So this glaze here, um, the specific gravity is 1.63 and the as the specific gravity number goes down um, That means you've increased the amount of water. So you add water to bring the specific gravity down So this glaze has less water in it Than this glaze and so as you can see this glaze is kind of this uh, Rose color where it's thick and then it's yellow where it's thin and so this could really affect your results, if your thickness isn't consistent, sometimes your pots could come out with this rose color and then other times they might be more yellow. And so you might like to have that variation, but sometimes it's nice to be able to control it. And so if you can control the amount of water, then you can adjust your application um, so to make it thinner or thicker, if like depending on what you prefer. So then we've got this other glaze, woo yellow here. And so uh, this one has less water than this one. And so you can see as you add water, the glaze is a little bit darker and you get like these darker edges. And that might be something that you like to have a glaze that breaks over the edges. And so when the glaze is a little on the thicker side, you might lose that um, the texture in your, like if you have texture on your pots. And so that might be another reason why you would want to keep your specific gravity at a lower level. Um, and then, so sometimes here we have a clear glaze on a dark clay body. And so this one has less water than this one. And so you can see how cloudy this glaze, this clear gets when it is um, too thick. And so when you add water and bring the specific gravity down, I mean, this isn't a perfect clear glaze by any means, but you can see how, um, you can see how much clearer it is when the specific gravity is on the lower side. Hi, Vinky. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. Okay, so, and then I just wanted to mention like both these tiles were both um, dipped for six seconds. So the specific gravity of this is 1.6 and 
And then the specific gravity of this is 1.4. So this one has more water than this one. And then, um, but they were both dipped for the same length of time because your the amount of time that you dip your glazes or your pots in your glaze for is also going to determine the thickness of your application. So if you can keep the water content consistent, then you can kind of predict how your glazes are going to behave. So, um, so then if you want a thinner application, like if you're going to be layering your glaze with other glazes, you might want to keep it on the thinner side so you can just dip for a shorter amount of time. Um, or sometimes you have a glaze that's like super juicy um, with lots of color and variation when it's on the thicker side. And so then you can, you would know that you can hold your piece in longer if you want a thinner, a thicker application. So it just uh, gives us a way to control our glaze application and so that it's a little more predictable, a little less surprising when we're opening the kiln. So uh, those are kind of the reasons why we would want to measure a specific gravity. And now I'm gonna show you how. Um, so this is a glaze that I've had. Um, it's just been sitting for a long, quite a long time. And so anytime that I go back to a glaze that I haven't used in a while, I wanna make sure that the water content is where I want it before I start using it. Hello, everyone that's um, saying hi. Uh, thank you for joining me. So what I did was, for the, for the purposes of this demonstration, um, I removed the water that was sitting on top. So I'm starting with kind of the least amount of water that, um, you know, that I can get from this glaze that I've already mixed. Um, Vinky says, if, you're, if your glaze is sitting for months, do we still need to measure specific gravity? Oh. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So my this glaze has been sitting for months. And um, so I definitely, before I'm going to use it, I want to make sure that I get it to the level that I've determined is the best for this particular glaze. So um, for this glaze, I like to keep it at around 1.45. <coughs> um, and that's not the ideal specific gravity for every glaze. That's just the specific gravity that I've determined works best for this clear glaze. And the way I determine that is I'll just take a glaze and I'll test it. So I'll mix a glaze with minimal water content. Um, I'll mix it and sieve it, uh, dip it test tile, and then I'll add water and I'll measure specific gravity each time and then I'll fire all those test tiles, and then I look at them and decide which one I like best. So it's really up to you uh, what the um, ideal specific gravity would be for your glazes. Um, so people are always like asking, you know, what specific gravity should this glaze be? Why don't people write, like, write it on their recipes? And that's because it's it's kind of subjective and it depends on your application methods and it depends on like your aesthetic preferences because you might like how it looks when it's thicker or thinner. And so you get to decide for yourself and the best way to figure that out is just by um, testing it over a range, uh, recording the specific gravity and then um, based on your fired results, you can decide how you want it to be. So this clear glaze, it works best actually between 1.4 and 1.45. So I always like, I never try to get it to an exact number because it just takes a little too long. So I always just have a range that I try to get each glaze in um, to fall in between. So the first step is um, I'm going to use this graduated cylinder. Um, so this is a 500 milliliter plastic graduated cylinder that I bought on Amazon. And uh, the first thing I do when I buy, I mean, I've only bought a couple of these in my life, but um, the first thing I would recommend that you do if you buy a graduated cylinder is to calibrate it first. And you do that by um, putting it on your scale and then you can weigh out like 100 grams of water and make sure that 
the 100 grams of water comes to the 100 milliliter line. So uh, one milliliter of water always weighs one gram. So if you have 100 grams of water, then you have 100 milliliters and so on. So this graduated cylinder was a little bit off. It was off by 10 milliliters, kind of the whole way up. So I just drew new lines. And so I know that if I want 100 milliliters, I have to bring it up to the 110 milliliter line. So that's just a tip if you're buying a new graduated cylinder, just to make sure that it's accurate. And then, um, so you wanna place it on your scale and then tear your scale so that the scale reads zero. And so then um, uh, you always want to high speed mix your glaze before you pour it into the graduated cylinder. And um, that's because as we know, like glazes can settle out. So the water rises to the top, the, the solid particles sink to the bottom. And for some glazes, it doesn't take very long at all for that to start happening. So you wanna make sure your glaze is completely homogenized before you pour it into the graduated cylinder. Because if it started settling, then um, you're gonna have a lower specific gravity reading than you should because there's gonna be more water at the top of the bucket. Hello, everybody. Okay, so. Um, so I have this drill with this teeny tiny little uh, paint mixing attachment. Um, I also have like a medium sized one and a large one for different bucket sizes. So uh, this was my most recent find. I was excited to find a medium one that's in between the little one and the big one. Um, another great way to high speed mix is with an immersion blender. Um, so these you can find at secondhand stores often quite easily. Um, so you can buy cheap ones. Uh, they don't last forever. So um, it's really common that the bearings will wear out and they'll start squealing after a while. Um, so uh, good to kind of pick these up whenever you see, the, see them like at a good price. Um, so I'm going to high speed mix this glaze. So if you're just joining, I took this glaze that I haven't used in quite a long time. It's a clear glaze. I poured the water off the top just for this demonstration. Um, so this will be the, the water that I add back into the glaze. Um, so whenever you're, uh, if you're removing water from a glaze, I always keep it, hang on to it because we always end up needing to add water back into a glaze uh, because water evaporates. And um, so it's, it's more common that you're going to need to keep adding water to a glaze than really remove it. So I just removed it for this demonstration. And then um, I'm gonna high speed mix. I'm gonna put my safety glasses on, uh, make sure I can see out of them. Uh, so safety first, right? Uh, just in case I splash anything in my eyes. So I'm gonna high speed mix. So this glaze is quite thick right now because I removed that water. So as long as I can pour it into the graduated cylinder, I'll be good to go. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna pour it in here. So I've teared my scale, so my scale reads zero right now with the graduated cylinder on top. And then I'm going to pour this in here. Um, another thing that I would do if I was um, grabbing a glaze or going to use a glaze that has been sitting for a while is I would um, sieve it first as well. So I noticed there's a few lumps in this glaze. I haven't sieved it, but um, before I would go to use it, I would probably give it a sieve. So now I have 355 milliliter, 
milliliters. Um, just grab my calculator here. So the calculation for specific gravity is grams per milliliter. So you divide the grams, the weight on the scale, so the weight of the liquid glaze in the graduated cylinder, you divide the grams by the milliliters and that's how you get your specific gravity. So, uh-oh, my calculator doesn't work. Well, this is, okay. So 561 grams and we have 355 milliliters. I'm just going to do a quick calculation. I can grab my laptop and uh, use the calculator function because my calculator is broken. So 561 divided by grams divided by milliliters, 355. So the specific gravity is 1.58. Um, Vinky says, do we need to keep it overnight after mixing? Um, you don't have to, you could use it right away. Um, so you're just, this is just a matter of getting the water content uh, to the level that you prefer it to be for uh, your application. And so once you measure specific gravity, then you're good to go and um, start glazing. So 1.58, so uh, grams per milliliter. So that's on the high side, especially for a clear glaze. Um, so I was saying earlier, I like to keep my glaze, my clear glaze between 1.4 and 1.45. And so to bring specific gravity down, we add water. And the specific gravity of pure water is one. And so the way to kind of remember um, how to bring it up or down is uh, the, when you add water, the specific gravity goes closer to one. And so since it's at 1.58, then adding water would bring it um, lower and closer to one. So I suspected that it would be on the high side. So what I'm gonna do is pour this back in here and it's quite thick. So then I'm going to add some water into here just to give it a rinse. And this is the water that I had removed from the top of the glaze. And so I'm fairly sure that uh, this glaze is going to be able to take all of this water um, because uh, I had it at 1.4 to 1.45 before I took a break and hadn't measured it or used it in a while. So then my little trick is to put my hand on top and shake. And that's a good way to um, rinse the graduated cylinder because that can be tricky. Um, but so as I, I was saying, like I'm pretty confident that I can add this much water and not be adding too much water because this is the water I removed from the glaze. But if you're, um, if you're new to this and just starting out, you wanna make sure that you add a very small amount at a time and then check specific gravity again because um, it's much easier to add water to a glaze than to remove it, especially a glaze that's been mixed. And so if you add too much water, then you have to kind of wait for it to settle out and then remove some water off of the top. So I'm gonna pour this amount of water back into the glaze and then I'm gonna give it a stir. Um, and then, so then I will measure specific gravity again and see if we got closer to my target, which is between 1.4 and 1.4. Five. So after stirring, I always high speed mix. Um, that's the best way to get the glaze homogenized. Okay. So that is, it's much uh, more fluid now. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I, I see comments over top. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, so it's much more fluid. So now I'm going to um, measure specific gravity again. So I just 
grab my graduated cylinder, make sure that the scale like hasn't shut off or, and, um, so I have it plugged in so it kind of holds the number, but sometimes if you have a, a battery operated scale and you wait too long, then it shuts off and you have to turn it back on. Um, so I also, another trick is I write how many grams this empty graduated cylinder weighs on the container in case um, I lose that tear and I, so I, and then you would need to subtract the weight of the container. Okay, so always give it another little mix before pouring. And it doesn't matter how many milliliters you add to the container. So when I first started measuring specific gravity, um, I heard that you wanna weigh 100 milliliters of glaze and then um, basically you divide that by 100 and that gives you your specific gravity. Um, but I was finding it really tedious to get the glaze right to the 100 milliliter mark without going over. Um, sometimes I'd get like glaze up the side of the container. And so then I was like, well, it's just math. So you're just dividing the grams by the milliliters. Um, so it doesn't really matter how much you put in. So we've got uh, 400 milliliters and 618 grams. So, so you don't get my laptop too dirty here. So 618 grams divided by 400 milliliters. Uh, so now it's down to 1.545. So it didn't come down by very much and you saw how much water I added. So now um, I'm trying to get it to between 1.4 and 1.45. So I'm gonna pour this back in here. And this is all you do basically. Um, once you know what your target specific gravity is, then you just keep adding a little bit of water at a time until you get to your target and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna add the rest of this uh, glaze water to the graduated cylinder, give it a shake, just to rinse that off. Um, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra water because I have a feeling it will need a little bit more. And then I will mix and we rinse and repeat, right? So, um, so this is much more fluid. The glaze is um, thinner in the bucket. The viscosity is lower. Um, and so it's gonna be much easier to get like a nice thin coat of clear because when you're working with clear glazes, oftentimes you're using a clear glaze to show what's underneath. Um, so either you're working with slips or under glazes or decals, um, or you just wanna show the color of the clay underneath. Um, and you really only need like a very, very thin layer of glaze for it to do its job and for your pots to be um, become vitrified and um, to have that layer of glass for, um, you know, for food safety and, and uh, that sort of thing. Like you, you don't need a really thick layer of glaze. Um, it's a very thin layer. As long as it's like you can, not rough and you can feel the clay body underneath, that would be too thin, I would say, for, for like a functional piece. Um, so making sure my scale is still teared, <clears throat> still zeroed out. And then I'm going to high speed mix again. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, see the comments here. I use a 150 milliliter syringe, eliminates a lot of the pouring. Yeah, so I have yet to acquire a syringe. Um, Okay, I did try, so I have these, these syringe, the syringe I got from like an in, uh, printer ink filling kit, inkjet cartridge filling kit. 
Um, so this only goes to 10 milliliters. The tip is like way too thin to suck the glaze out. I suppose I could remove the tip. Anyways, this was my first experience trying to use a syringe to measure specific gravity and um, it failed miserably. And so then I switched to the graduated cylinder and um, so that's just what I do now, but a syringe is definitely um, a good method. And so um, um, it's just not what, what I have chosen to use, but yeah, you can use a syringe. Um, I would still calibrate it just to make sure it's accurate by weighing your water. Um, so when you get a, your syringe, you just fill it with water up to a certain milliliter mark and then weigh it, tear your scale first, and then make sure that the grams, uh, the weight of the water in grams matches the milliliters. Hello, Yukon, Amber Lee. Awesome, Yukon, Canada. Okay, so I've been talking uh, since I high speed mix, but so I'll just make sure I give this a nice good stir again, and then I will fill this. And see if we're closer to our 1.45 mark. So the glaze is much thinner now, and it pours much more easily as well. So, put that back on the scale, and we've got 400, and 10 milliliters and 614, 615 grams. So we go 615 grams divided by 410, 1.5. So this glaze can still take a little bit more water, um, but basically those are the steps. Uh, for bringing specific gravity down. And so if you have any questions, um, please feel free to type them in the chat. And um, I will just keep, I'm gonna do one more where I add a little bit more water and that will be it. And I was gonna do like a little studio tour um, because it's Clay Week, it's Open Studio Weekend, so shout out to Clay Week and all the other presenters for Clay Week. And, um, but then I had to set up my camera so that I could like get all this in the shot. And so I didn't wanna like mess around uh, by showing you my studio, but maybe I'll do one more of these and then I can like take my camera and just show you around a little bit. So I'm gonna add a, oops. I'm gonna add a bit more water to this. And um, again, another tip is like, I just kind of eyeballing it, but you could um, measure how much water you're adding each time. And then, um, and then you're, it's less of a guess each time. Do you have any additive on the glaze, bentonite or other? Um, yeah, this glaze, possibly has bentonite in it. I can't actually remember uh, whether it has bentonite in it. This is a glaze. So this is um, Sue's Clear. Um, it's on glazy.org. And so if you want to uh, find the recipe, it's on there. And then um, I know that I have flocculated this glaze in the past. Um, so I may, I probably won't need to flocculate it again. So um, unless your glaze is like high use and where it's getting used and remixed and um, refilled all the time, uh, once you flocculate it, it kind of holds on to that. And so I can kind of tell like when I stir this glaze and then I stop stirring, I just watch how long it swirls in the bucket. And so when I get this to 1.45 and then I stir it and if it, if it keeps moving around and around and around, um, that means it has low viscosity and viscosity is a fluid's resistance to flow. So there's not much resistance to flow if the glaze keeps swirling around and around. Um, 
And so when you flocculate a glaze, it increases the viscosity. Um, it helps the particles to, it changes the charge of the particles so that they attract each other and stick together like magnets, which um, increases the resistance to flow. So that increases the viscosity. Uh, will you post this on Facebook? Yes, I will post this on Facebook. Thanks for this. In the old days, I just stuck my finger in the glaze and called it good. I did that as well. Um, and then I just found that my results were so unpredictable um, and it just wasn't a good enough method because the thing is, is you've got your water content um, and then you've got your viscosity. And so you can adjust a glaze's water content uh, and that will thin the glaze down the more water you add, but then you can also increase the viscosity by flocculating or you can decrease the viscosity by deflocculating. And so the finger dip method um, shows you the viscosity of the glaze, but not necessarily the water content. And so some glazes, you can have lots of water in them already and they'll still be really thick in the bucket and then you dip your finger in and it shows that it's too thick. So then you're gonna keep adding water. And if you continue to add water, um, some glazes that have lots of clay in them or absorbent materials, um, they will absorb the water and then they also um, shrink when they dry. So they hang on to the water. They don't release the water into the bisque when you glaze them. They take longer to dry. And then as they dry, because that water wasn't sucked into the bisque, the water stays in between the particles of glaze. Then as they dry, they shrink. And then you get um, a glaze that cracks. And sometimes it can um, crawl during the glaze firing. Or sometimes the glaze all just falls off your pot before you even get it into the kiln. And so, um, so you can you can decrease the viscosity of a glaze by deflocculating instead of adding water. And so, um, so the water is just like kind of half of the puzzle and then the viscosity is another step that you have to kind of, um, you have to look at them separately. So I always get the water to where I want it first, then I assess the viscosity and I flocculate or deflocculate if required. Every glaze isn't going to need to be flocculated or deflocculated. Um, it's just when I get it to the specific gravity I want, at that point, if it's too thin, um, if I do the finger dip test and it's like really thin on my finger, then I would flocculate it to thicken it back up again. Uh, Plains and clay, great work, Sue, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, okay, so I added a bit of water to here, but thanks for all the questions. Keep them coming. I like it when people interact. I've done a lot of Facebook lives where there's nobody watching until later, so I like it when you guys talk to me. So I added water, just giving it a rinse, and add that to the glaze. And so then I can... Give this a mix. Flat River Studios says, I use specific gravity now. Yeah, I really recommend it. Um, if you weren't here when I started this video, um, I was showing, um, you know, how test tiles. So here's an example. Uh, this is the same glaze. And so this one, the specific gravity is 1.68. So that's really high. That means it has a low amount of water. And then this one, the specific gravity is 1.5. And so adding water completely changed the appearance of the glaze. So this is much too thin. So this is a glaze that once I bring the specific gravity down, my glasses are fogging up. Um, once I bring the specific gravity down, then I flocculate it. And so when I take this glaze and flocculate it with Epsom salts, um, then it thickens it back up again and you get that blue color back. And so the other thing is, if you look, 
Uh, this glaze has this big drip on the side, so this one has the least amount of water, um, but it's also running. So you don't want the glazes running onto your kiln shelves. Um, so then at 1.5, uh, flocculated, we still get the blue color, but then we don't get the big drip. So that is um, just to show like how flocculation works. Um, Plainsman clay. So that that test tile was sapphire blue. If you go to um, glazy.org and find my um, my glazy account, it's called sapphire blue from Cedar Hill. Um, do, 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 do. Sue, the method you taught has been always helpful for me to get good results. Prefer specific gravity always. I remember still the first class I took from you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you were one of my, in my first group of students. So I'm glad this method is working well for you. Um, okay. So now, <laughs> get so distracted. I'm just going to high speed mix and then we'll measure specific gravity again. So I'd add, I've added a little bit of extra water and then so just making sure that that hasn't started to settle out. I'm sorry, I know I missed some comments and I'm afraid to touch my screen in case I... Um, stop the video or something so uh great explanations yeah no problem thank you thank you for watching okay so this will be the last one that i do because i'm not it's not that exciting really <laughs> it is when you get um consistent glaze results that can be life-changing um yukon and amberly we use so many of your glaze recipes at arts underground yay okay yukon so i taught um a glaze workshop uh, in Whitehorse, Yukon in May of 2019. And so uh, we need a whole bunch of different glaze recipes. Um, we did color runs of 10 different recipes and or nine maybe. And so, uh, yeah, so they have lots of new colorful glazes. Okay, so I'm going to fill this graduated cylinder. Ta-da! And so again, it doesn't matter how much, um, how high you fill it because you're just dividing the grams by the milliliters. And so it's a proportion. So I'll put this on here. And so we have 577 grams. And so grams, 577 divided by uh, 395 milliliters. So we're at 1.46, so that is pretty close. I was targeting 1.45, so we were close enough. Uh, so then I would go ahead and assess the viscosity of this glaze. Um, so just by, so there's the finger dip method that I'm sure you have all seen before. And then I like to just watch how long it swirls in the bucket. So I stir, um, and when I stop mixing, I watch for how, like how many times it swirls around before the bubbles kind of stop moving. And so what you want is for it to kind of come, you know, swirl around a couple times and come to an abrupt stop and not just keep moving around and around and around. And then that's um, when you know, and then you can verify with the finger dip. So I don't know if you can see that, but... I think that's a pretty good coat. There's something on my finger that's resisting the glaze, I think. Um, but you want the glaze to stick to your finger, so you don't want it all to run off um, and back into the bucket. You want it to coat your finger, but you also don't want it to be like so thick that you can't see like your fingernail and knuckle underneath. Uh, when you make a fresh glaze, how long do you let it sit before testing and adjusting specific gravity? Um, so when you mix a glaze, like I would say ideally you're waiting 24 hours um, because that is going to allow the glaze 
you know, anything soluble uh, to dissolve. Um, so sometimes when our glazes have soluble ingredients, um, like sodium, for example, sodium is a deflocculant. So your glaze, depending what it's made of, can become naturally deflocculated. So without adding a deflocculant, it just becomes naturally much thinner than it would be uh, without that soluble sodium. And so um, ideally 24 hours, I admit that I don't always wait that long. Um, and so, I mean, uh, what I do every time, like, so if I'm in a hurry and I just need to mix a glaze and go for it, like, I think you can get it close enough where that's gonna work for you. Um, and then the next time I use the glaze, uh, after it's been sitting for a while, I'll measure specific gravity again. Um, the thing is, it's not the specific gravity that's gonna change by waiting 24 hours, it's the viscosity. And so your glaze materials, like um, anything absorbent like clay, grossly borate, anything containing magnesium like magnesium carbonate and talc, um, these, these materials kind of absorb water. And so to give them enough time to do what they're gonna do, because when they absorb water, it also increases the viscosity of the glaze. Um, and then on the flip side, if there's any soluble sodium, then that can decrease the viscosity. So the specific gravity is always going to be the same because uh, specific gravity is just the proportion of solid particles to water. And so within 24 hours, like that's, that's just going to be what it is. You got your grams and your milliliters, and if none of that changes, your specific gravity number isn't going to change. But what could change over time is that um, the viscosity, and so uh, the dissolving of particles or the absorbing of water. So hopefully that answers your question. And okay, so that's kind of it for my specific gravity demonstration. Um, I'm just gonna walk you guys around my studio quickly because uh, I've just never really done that. And this is open studio week. Take these safety glasses off. Um, so thank you all for coming. Let's see if I can turn my camera around. Okay, fun. So uh, here we have like tons of little containers of glaze tests. Um, and then back up, so I've got like colorants here. Um, I do not recommend glass jars for your glaze materials, um, but that's what I had when I was starting out. I used to make candles um, in these glass jars, and so um, I just had a bunch. So I use them, but I would like to switch to plastic containers. Um, and then we've got like all my glaze ingredients. Um, I recently bought myself a label maker, so they are all very nicely labeled. Um, which makes me very happy. <laughs> it seriously brought me so much joy, my label maker. Okay, here we've got uh, some test tiles that I had ready for this demonstration. Um, so here's another one where, here's the specific gravity is high, uh, 1.62 and then 1.47. So you can see like if you're expecting your glaze to come out like this and it comes out like this, um, you might be super disappointed. And so that's a good reason to like keep your specific gravity consistent. And this is 1.62, so that's quite high. You might like it like that. Um, this glaze is dripping at 1.62. So this would probably be a glaze. If I took this uh, 1.47, if I flocculated this glaze, then it would appear more like this one. So that's how you can kind of manipulate the surfaces. Um, here's another, oops, a white glaze. So you can see, again, you've got the big drip where the specific gravity is high, and then when it's lower, so this is 1.48, um, no dripping. So that is how uh, specific gravity kind of works. And here, these are, this is an example of 
before and after flocculating. So you can see that flocculating this glaze kind of gives it a little more depth. Um, it's a little bit shinier. And then uh, this is before flocculating. Um, it's a much thinner coat. And so some people like it like this and others like it like that. Uh, so I got my triple beam balance scale right there box of test tiles. So here is like my favorite. Mm. <laughs> so those, all these boxes have test tiles in them and they're all sorted. So this is like one glaze I was testing when I was in school called 86. Um, and this is this, this box is full of test tiles from just one base glaze with a bunch of different colorants in it. Um, so the, that's my test tile collection, which I am super happy about. I just love like going through test tiles. Um, what else? So then we've got the rest of my studio. So my boyfriend's band practices on the other side of the room. There's the drum kit. We got microphones, a uh, lovely wood stove for heat. Um, and then over here, this is my throwing area. Um, I use a mirror for throwing so I'm not like hurting my neck looking sideways at my pots. Um, this is like my working table. I have um, hardy backer uh, screwed down to the top and so I use this instead of canvas now. Um, since uh, I removed the canvas from my let me turn this around. Hi. <laughs> I removed the canvas from my table and it was like super gross and black and moldy underneath. Um, so I wanted to find something that uh, is going to like uh, be less um, holding of dust and mold. And so the Hardy Backer board has been great. Um, if you're drying out clay, um, it absorbs moisture really fast. Um, so that can be work in your favor or against it, depending what you're trying to do. Um, so I think that is the end of my demo. Let me put this back up here. Um, so yeah, again, like shout out to Clay Week. Hopefully you guys have um, got to see some other demonstrations and open studios. Um, and thank you so much for coming to this. Uh, there are so many of you that joined, so that makes me super happy and like um, people are paying attention <laughs> to what I'm saying. Um, so sometimes you just don't know on the internet, right? Okay, so this has been super fun and I hope you guys have a really good weekend and I will be posting this video um, in all the places, I'm sure. So uh, this will be available to watch later. So have a good day. Bye.